we, we obviously found out yesterday that the club had won the Respect and Fair Play Award for the Football League for the 2013-14 season, I suppose, for you and the rest of the club to be really, really proud of. Absolutely, yeah, very proud. Um, happy that it's been recognised um, because obviously in the past, OK, the long past, Exeter's disciplinary record hasn't been great and my first action as director of football here having returned from Japan for the second time in 2002 when the club had been relegated. My first job was to go with Julian and talk to the disciplinary committee about why Exeter's record was so bad during that season. It was a relegation season, therefore they finished 91st out of 92 teams and they also finished 91st out of 92 in poor discipline. So, of course, I had to say that I didn't see any of the games. I can't really comment, but you would suppose in a relegation season there's been a lot of pressure, tension, um, perhaps they're losing the game at home and, uh, you know, the pressure's really on and, you know, the away team, a goal in front and trying to keep the ball in the corner flag and, you know, the brain goes and, and decisions, bad decisions are made, you know, with challenges. So I think that's what happened a little bit in that year. And anyway, they made the point to me that the club had already had a £25,000 suspended sentence hanging over from the year before. And of course, the trust had just taken over. They didn't have 25 grand to pay anyone and were raising money all through raffles and bring and buy sales, etc. So, you know, it was down to me and Julian to convince them that it was going to improve. And although I couldn't speak about why that problem had arose, the poor discipline, you know, what was I going to do about it? And I said, look, I don't mean to um, name drop, but I've just come back from Japan where my team was uh, top of the fair play league five years out of five. And um, instigated by both Aussie Ardeal as the manager and myself, and then for the last three years of that five years for me, because I was the manager. And we, we found that it was much better off if the players did not speak to the referee. So we stopped them talking. Therefore, they couldn't get done for dissent. So you eliminated those straight away. And uh, we just wanted them to play and pass and move and all the, all the good, positive things in the game instead of this, you know, close the game out and waste time and run it in the corner flag and body check and professional fouls and all these nonsense things that coaches teach players. So we wanted them to be, you know, very sort of pure in their football thinking. And it worked and we were as good a team as there was out there and uh, we were successful. Some people think if you play fair, you play soft. That doesn't have to be, absolutely not. Because when you go for that ball, you're going in as strong as anyone else because you're going for the ball. And uh, of course, the odd time you're going to mistime it and you're going to get a yellow card and that would be deserved. But don't get done for a descent, don't get done for kicking the ball away, don't get done for stupid lashing out at an opponent. And um, do you know what? The club couldn't afford you to do that. So I think they made us pay 12 and a half grand out of the 25 uh, on the hope that we would improve and we did improve. I think the following year we finished 19th. Had we been in the league, we weren't, we're now in the conference. So that was a complete turnaround from 91st to 19th. And um, the other thing was that when a club is lacking money, um, they got the bill for 12 and a half grand to pay the FA. And I said to the players out on this veranda here, if the club had received that invoice three days earlier, you wouldn't have got paid for this last month where you've just been working your nuts off. So it was right in the face, this, what it means, bad discipline. And um, over the years, it's progressively got a bit better and a bit better and a bit better. And of course you have the blip, you have a you know, sending off here and there. Um, but, but it's a competitive sport and you're, you're going to find that happens. But over the course of a season, I'd back us to be as good as anyone with discipline to the referee and, and stuff. So um, that's why I'm proud and delighted that we've, instead of costing us money, we've gained some money out of it. And there's a, there is a little sign up in the uh, 
in the pavilion that says referees rule even when they're wrong and it's signed by you and that kind of it tells you a little bit about the culture that you've tried to instill here and, and everyone, yeah. everyone's taken on board yeah well again look at the uh, Thiago Silva who's missed the semi-final of the World Cup because of a second yellow card I don't know if anyone remembers that second yellow card but I think they had a corner kick goalkeeper took it the opponent keeper and he's getting ready to kick it long and Thiago Silva steps across him and sort of nudges him and gets a stupid cheap yellow card that makes him miss the semi-final the Brazilian result was a catastrophe in terms of performance and result and maybe it could have all been so different in their home nation where the whole country are behind them if their captain had not missed that semi-final and was it worth it for a little nudge on the goalkeeper so we pay respect to the referee we pay respect to the games and the game the furtherment of the game is very important to it's, it's sort of easy for me coming to the end of my sort of career but you want the game played in the right manner and the game I think referees just have to remember that it's not about refereeing the game for Wenger or for Ferguson or Steve Perriman. Rule the game according to the rule book. And while they do that, everyone knows where they stand. Once a referee takes, takes to say 20% below the rule book, I don't really want to give a yellow card for that. It says give it, but I'm not really, that's a cheap one. I'm not going to give it for that. And then someone goes 20% the other way, now all of a sudden you've got a 40% gap where players and supporters alike can say the game's not consistent. Just be consistent. And a number of times, I've been very impressed with the way Tiz has sort of carried on the, the good work of, of Eamon and, and Alex and uh, sort of helped by me. Of course, I've been a consistent factor in that. And where he's actually said to referees before a game, when they've said, we don't like giving cheap yellow cards. It's his as answered. If they deserve a yellow card, give it to them. Simple as that. Simple and the opponent that. manager looks at him like he's stupid. But if we're playing by the rule book, so should the other team. And why should that particular referee on that day decide what a cheap yellow card is when the referee next week may not decide that's a cheap yellow card? So where's the consistency for players? So. Um, yeah, I think, I think poor discipline is the sort of cancer of the game. Um, I think crowds pay money to see the ball in play. They don't always like what they see while it's in play, but at least it's in play. So when you see a goalkeeper take a minute or two minutes every time there's a goal kick, that is a waste of people's money and um, shouldn't be allowed. And